My name's Joey Gibson. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. We're good? Okay. Yeah, I'm the founder of Patriot Prayer, and uh, it's kind of amazing to be here today. It's my pleasure. Uh, it's actually very interesting because I'm here in a safe location. It's absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm used to, like, horns going off, people throwing stuff at me, and I still have to continue to speak no matter what. Like, I'm not even joking. And uh, we have a lot of, like, citizens that have to be on the, the outsides, like, waiting for someone to barge in and try to attack the stage. Like, it's crazy the, the time that we're living in right now. So let me give you a quick story on where I came from. Um, some of you may have heard of it, some of you not. But basically what happened is I've, I've been a constitutionalist my whole life. I just never did anything about it. Uh, never really been a fan of any president that we've had since I was born, except for Reagan. Um, but I was just a baby at the time. So, um, And so... <clears throat> What happened is basically what woke me up, and, and there's a lot of youth in our country that are sleeping right now. And if they're, they are involved in activism, then it's usually on the far left, okay? And what happened was a Trump rally in San Jose, okay? Um, it opened my eyes. People left the rally, just normal Americans, wearing Trump hats or not. It didn't matter. They were being attacked. They are being spit on. They are being yelled at, being cussed at, dehumanized, treated like trash. Okay, and I saw that and it woke me up and all of a sudden I realized that we have a major problem in our country. We have a cultural problem where people feel like it's appropriate to spit on someone just because they went to go see someone speak. Someone who's running for the president of the United States. And it was at a cultural level, but it's also at a government level because the mayor, like, like on the movie, that was an amazing movie by the way, it's very accurate, okay? The mayor had the police stand down. And they do that to further their own political, their, their far left ideology, okay? Because they're afraid of what Trump was doing. Whether you're a fan of Trump or not, you have to admit the fact that he was from outside of the system and he wasn't playing ball with the right or the left, okay? And they're afraid of that. And he was a man of the people. He was throwing 40,000 people strong rallies, okay? And th that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make people afraid. So they want people to feel like if you go to a Trump rally, when you leave, you might get attacked. Your wife might get attacked. Your children might get attacked. I will never forget it. There was a kid, maybe 18 years old, a skinny kid running for his life from a mob. From a mob. For what? Because he went to go see someone speak who's running for the president of the United States. And it was that moment in time that I decided that I will. I am going to. I am no longer am I going to be asleep. No longer. Not going to happen. See, at that moment in time, those people who were committing those acts of violence, they had their faces uncovered, okay? Antifa wasn't that big at that time. It was big, it was growing in, in Europe and other places, and they were trying to build, you know, but Trump kind of helped them out to grow their numbers, let's be honest, okay? Um, so what I decided to do is I went down to the RNC, walked around the streets, met a bunch of people, and, and the, the streets were owned by the far left, okay? And the thing is, the streets... In the last 20 years, in terms of uh, activism, has been ran by hate. What I hate, why I'm mad, why I'm pissed, why I'm a victim, why we need government to take care of us, okay? But it was never built off of love. It was never built off of freedom. And so that's why I decided I'm going to come home, and I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just a normal person, but I'm going to bring a movement of love, a movement of peace, a movement of freedom to the streets that, that takes away the power from the government. Because when you empower people, when you understand the importance of love, when you understand the, 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 the strength of the human soul, we don't need a government. We don't need a large government. We need them to build our roads, yeah, fix the potholes, stuff like that. Take a small amount of our taxes, okay? Take a small amount. That's all we need. We don't, all this victim, all, all the, 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 that's why they're trying to, on the West Coast, this whole victim thing is a big problem, okay? So basically what I did is, is uh, I, I, uh, I took my flags and uh, just hit the streets because I didn't know what to do. Okay, and um, basically went around and threw my first rally. And uh, after Trump had won, I kind of like took a step back. I was like, all right, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just gonna take a, a break here and there. Uh, March 4th, there was uh, rallies all over the country and that's when Antifa came out of the woodwork. Um, that's where uh, down in Berkeley, um, and then they went and they attacked the university when Milo tried to speak. Um, and then I threw my first rally, uh, second rally, it was a bigger one in Vancouver, April 15th. And uh, Antifa came out of nowhere, and they're just attacking people. And the one thing that opened my eyes, okay, I don't have too much time, but when I would go around, I would talk to people. I would say, do you know who Antifa is? They would say, no, I have no idea who that is. I have no idea. And that drove me crazy. It was that. Number two, the media never talked about Antifa. Politicians 
would always call me out, call me a white supremacist, say I'm a, a, a violent person, even though all I do is preach peace and love, but they would never talk about Antifa. And I prayed about it and prayed about it, and I understood that this is one thing that God wanted me to do. He wanted me to go up and down the West Coast to bring these hateful people out into the public eye because a lot of the stuff they do is under the surface. They'll go after your job. They'll post pictures of you, call you a Nazi. They, my friend, one of my best friends, Tiny, his family had to leave the other day. They had to move out of town because they got so many death threats. So said they're going to kill his sisters, kill their children. And that's what, I'm, that's what I want people to understand. This, this far left, I know that a lot of liberals are about love and they are about freedom. But they have to be against hate 100% of the time. 100% of the time. That's the thing they don't get. You don't get to pick and choose when it's okay to be hateful. They come to my rally saying they want to fight hate. I literally got beat up with a guy that had a shield in Berkeley that said no hate. <laughs> Seriously. I'm not even joking. If you, I mean, you check out the film. And so this is the thing, the, the thing that I believe that God wanted me to do is that I think God has always wanted me to go to these areas and to expose the truth, to let people see the truth, and then you guys can decide what to do with it. Okay? You guys decide what to do with it. It's not my, my responsibility to tell you guys what to do. I went down to uh, Berkeley. I'll, I'll tell you this, these two things real quick, and I'll finish up. I went down to Berkeley April 15th, and it, it was in the, Martin Luther King and someone I've looked up to my whole life, the things that he did. Okay? We went down there in, in Martin Luther King Park. It was a total war zone. You guys saw the film. The police stood down, right? And I don't believe the police want to do that, but they're forced to do it. They stood down. Total violence. I, I had tears in my eyes that day walking around there seeing that. It's unacceptable, especially in a park called Mar Martin Luther King Park. And I was committed to somehow expose this for what it is. And we did stuff here and there, and, and violence kept breaking out of my rallies and that and everything. August 28th was, was the moment in time I feel like we really exposed them for who they really are. Um, there was thousands of protesters in the park making sure that we couldn't come in there, about 500 to 800 Antifa members um, with their no-hate shields and all that stuff. And uh, I was about 10 blocks away, and I just started walking to the park. And I just started, I asked Jesus to walk with me. I said, Jesus, just walk with me. Please walk with me, because I was scared. I knew exactly what I was going to do. And I turned around, I got Tiny. Tiny's not Tiny, he's a big boy, he's a big Simone, okay? And I got Pete. These two guys who, whose lives have been changed. They used to be filled with, Tiny used to beat up Trump supporters, we'll put it that way, okay? Until he started to hear the, 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 the true um, about freedom and love and peace and these things that, that is really in his heart. And he's become a protector, not a violent person. But they just followed me and they knew what I was going to do, but they're like, they didn't even question it. We didn't even speak. I just asked Jesus to walk with me and I was so afraid, so scared. And we just walked right in the middle of that park. Thousands of protesters. We have these normal liberals holding signs saying peace and love and no hate and all this stuff. And we just went straight up to Antifa. We put our hands up, and we just got surrounded by Antifa. We kept our hands up. Pete got knocked out cold to the ground. Somehow, like he was knocked out, somehow Tiny picked him up. I don't know how he did this. And he like shook him. He said, go. And he ran out of there. I don't know how. He barely stumbled away. He still has side effects to this day. Okay? I got hit several times. I got hit in the head. They stole my hat. I still I missed that hat. I love that hat. They stole my hat. They pepper sprayed me a bunch of times. The whole time my hand was up. They threw bottles of piss at me. They threw uh, tons of stuff at us. And we slowly walked back, walked past several police officers, walked back. We finally got to a police line. We finally got out of there, and they arrested us um, just to calm down the crowd, took us out of there, okay? And the very next day, and several other people got assaulted too. And the very next day, and that was in Martin Luther King Park. And I'll never forget that because that's what he would have done, you know? We have to expose this hatred with love. It's the only way, guys. We have to continue. I know that a lot of us have felt like our country is burning down, like it's going down, and I understand that. I understand that concern. But we gotta have faith, and we gotta believe in the American people. If the American people see the truth, if they see the light, if they see the love, and they see the potential, because there's nothing more beautiful than freedom. Am I right? <laughs> nothing more beautiful. And that's what we got going for us. We got, we're talking about one of the most beautiful things in this world. We're talking about freedom. And our kids, our kids, it is so easy to teach them the importance of freedom. And this, I'm going to finish with this, okay? This is why they have to brainwash our kids to believe in communism because it's one of the most disgusting ideologies in this world. It is disgusting. It's, it is insane. They have to brainwash them. Here's what I say to the kids because I'm bringing in kids, man. I'm bringing in the youth. It's the new punk movement. I'm telling you. 
I talked to these kids who are 18 years old and they just graduated high school. Most of them lean left, okay? Whatever. Or, uh, uh, the ones I talked to are far left. They don't even know what they're talking about, okay? I talk to them, I say, hey, your whole life, your whole life you've been told what to do by your teachers, by your parents. You've had all these rules. You can't wear this. You can't wear this. You have to be in at this time. You have to do that. You have to, whatever. Your whole life you've been told what to do. Now you're on your own. Is that what you want to continue to have for the rest of your life? And they say, no. They say, no. And I say, because you love freedom. You cherish freedom. It's that easy, guys. We can bring the youth in. We continue to preach peace and love. I'm telling you, we will get this country back, especially on the West Coast. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having me here today.